here to convince me that all this is quite necessary. I'm here to tell you that the job's been done. Nothing else could have brought us to the same results. But better? You work on a higher plane than we do, Brain. But it doesn't mean that we're going to try to rise to your occasions. We work to our own methods. Oh. Oh, this is... You want me to flay away any flesh still present, so to speak? The job is not done yet, Brain. Your partner's in yourself for the reason why you're here. The mouth finds who he needs to find. The muscle does what we need to do. And you find what we need to find. Yes, yes. That is the case, isn't it? I will say, however, that if you're planning on putting the body in the trunk on your way to the river, you may run into some difficulty. How so, Brian? Well, just pay attention to what you're transporting. I mean, if you plan on wrapping that body in plastic, the burnt areas of the flesh will stick to it. The agitation of movement may cause further ruptures. The plastic will become oversaturated if the body opens. The problem with the trunk is that you will have to lift it. If you just leave it in the back seat, all you'll have to do is slide it out. Agitation of movement may shake some very fragile joints, causing the body to um, open. It's not my problem. I just tell you what you need to do. I meant job, of course. I'm just messing with you. Do you have any information for the mouth? Yes. First rogue in his ladder. Hello, Mrs. Dale. Where's your husband? Out with another female client? You have no idea what you're doing here, but I will say that there are some friends of mine who are expecting me shortly. Sweetie, you're planning on going to bed in less than an hour. Look at you. Your makeup's off, your hair's up, but it's not clipped. It's tied. And you've been wearing your work clothes for the past hour. You're not planning on seeing anyone but me, miss. That's it. Now where is Mr. Dale? You want me to tell you where my husband is? And why? You don't seem quite yourself. I never liked you to begin with. And now you have this newfound arrogance. Mrs. Dale, don't doubt the deeds you've heard from the other housewives. But don't misattribute them either. Mr. Dale is perfectly safe, given cooperation. As are you. If any unsavory calls were to be made, you would be found perfectly safe and sound. My word is where the paranoid finds solace. Trust me. I don't want any trouble for me or my husband. He's not here, and I would appreciate it if he wouldn't stay for the duration. If you ignore your first impulse, Mrs. Dale, who knows the notions you may reject? What does your brain say? Not your mind, your brain. Your wants. You have all you need, Mrs. Dale. You have food in your fridge, water in your well, you have oxygen in your air. Your roof is ensured not to fall in over your head. What do you want? And don't protect the mister. Neither of us care for him. He's like taking fancy to a particular leaf in a maple tree. But he's still a man. Still just a person, and you can't hurt someone else. He's a no one. But he does know things. That's it. No one's gonna get hurt. Mr. and Mrs. Dale, together at last. I see, Mr. Dale, that your wife's disregard of your physical form doesn't translate to your cosmic well-being. Oh, that's good. A strong relationship. I have need to locate a man. Do you know who I mean? His friend was found face down, and the collective concern of those involved swiped any clues that may lead to the discovery of his death. Which, of course, was without his resolve. What makes you believe I would turn traitor so easily? Your wife. 
you leave her out. She has no knowledge of any of this. Leave the room! I need to find that man, Mr. Dale. Need I remind you of the brother you have hidden in the Witness Protection Agency? I can find him. With my wits, I cheat the wits of others. And steel, steely resolve will whittle the remains. The man at the far end of your table. I need him. Just him. The rest of you can resume what you're doing. Unless, of course, in the future I'm assigned to you, too. But then it'll be just coincidence. Red left Cleveland on oh. the 8th day of July. She said this town could burn for all I care. Drove like hell until the smoke filled the sky. No, no, you really shouldn't kill him here. He's the target. Why are you so nice? The others are just incapacitated. If he's to be killed, we should do it somewhere else. He's not really with them, see? His fingernails are clean, theirs aren't. They've been abroad, he hasn't. If we're going to kill him, we should separate them. They'll never find us that way. Johnny was a young punk back in the day. He didn't give a damn about anyone. Expenses will only ever cover for transportation. When was the last time crime was committed with no law for improvement? Who we'll raised the reward? It's in Torton? Where's that? Up in the mountains. It's not remote. Torton itself is a city. But the surrounding areas are sparsely populated. An island. So I bring the long-range firepower. Yes, an emphasis on long-range would be best. I need the dark green climbing boots. Oh yes, the ones with the serration for kicking. Oh, but those are illegal. We have them locked up for a reason. We'll get one of the uptown men to bring them. Oh, the uptown men overcharge. Let me talk to them. Blood will dilute our expenses. I'm gonna need, for them, a blunt object reference.